Welcome, I'm Max Horowitz, producer and host of Penderecki in Memoriam podcast. This podcast is created by Anna Pezhanowska and presented by Polish Cultural Institute, New York. Penderecki in Memoriam podcast unveils a multifaceted portrait of Krzysztof Penderecki with commentary from musicians, colleagues, radio programmers, and writers who lend insight and memories of Poland's greatest modern composer. This podcast is part of Penderecki in Memoriam Worldwide Project, honoring the life and legacy of the great composer. Thank you to project partners Dukes, Naxos, Ludwig von Beethoven Association, and Schott EAM for sharing Christoph Penderecki's music with the world. We appreciate you joining us in honoring and celebrating Penderecki's life and legacy. Extending far beyond his native Armenia, Sergei Sambatian's prolific musical career is driven by his vision to make the world a better place through music, culture, education, and spiritual enrichment. Founder, artistic director, and conductor of the Armenian State Symphony, Maestro Sambatian is also the principal conductor of the Malta Philharmonic, and has led many of the world's greatest orchestras, including the Moscow Symphony, Warsaw Philharmonic, London Symphony, Prague Radio Symphony, Dresden Philharmonic, Marinsky Theater Orchestra, Berlin Symphony, the Jerusalem Symphony, and many, many others. The 2018 Christoph Penderecki Days Festival in Yerevan, Armenia, was dedicated to Penderecki's 85th anniversary and included the Armenian premiere of the great composer's Symphony No. 7, Seven Gates of Jerusalem, with Maestro Sambatian leading the Armenian State Symphony. Sergei Sambatian is here with us to discuss the symphony as well as Penderecki's visits to Armenia and his family connections. Hello, Sergei. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Hello. Great honor to be here. Sergei, Penderecki had very close ties to Armenia. His grandmother was Armenian. Can you tell us a bit about that and when you first met him? So I met Maestro years ago, more than, I think, more than 10 years ago, 12 years maybe. So that was first visit of Maestro to Armenia. And I remember that was, at the time I was really young conductor and we performed a small piece with string orchestra and I can't even describe the feeling when I was on the stage and Maestro was in the hall and I really remember our first meeting and yes, he was greatest friend, biggest and closest friend of Armenia, of our nation and not only Armenian the musicians in general because every year he was coming to Armenia with his fantastic wife, Elisabetta Pendereska for Aram Khachaturian International Competition I'm the artistic advisor of the competition and and of course, we have like, fantastic the relations with the family in general. And as I mean, you mentioned about the Seven Gates of Jerusalem, that was the highest point in my musical the career, of course. But before, on the 10th anniversary of Armenian State Symphony Orchestra, I just mentioned that we have a most important day in our life because that's the, really the project of our life, the Armenian Symphony. And Maestro came to Armenia just for one day to celebrate with us. And yes, he is the greatest friend of Armenian the musicians. Armenia and our orchestra, the Armenian State Symphony, and his music is very important for Armenians in general, for all the musicians and not only the musicians. But we're really proud to mention that, yes, there is the strongest connections with our nation. For me as a musician, the friendship with the orchestra, with Maestro, the family, was the seventh gates of, of Jerusalem because it's a very special piece for Armenians because we have a stronger connection also with Jerusalem and all this story. I remember the performance, I remember the rehearsals, and it was the kind of a miracle when Maestro mentioned after the concert that this was one of the best the performances of this symphony and he was really the surprise. So I'm really the proud to speak about this.
Seven Gates work was created on the occasion of the 3,000th anniversary of Jerusalem at the request of the city's mayor, Penderecki first visited Jerusalem in 1974, following the Yom Kippur War. The piece is based on texts from the Old Testament, and Penderecki wanted to emphasize that the gates of Jerusalem are open to everyone. What special significance did Jerusalem have for Penderecki? Jerusalem, that special place for Penderecki as the musician and the story and text, what we can hear and all the choirs, all the lines, all the philosophy, what we can hear in this symphony. For Armenia, Jerusalem is a very special place because we have biggest heritage there and Armenian church and Armenians was in Jerusalem centuries ago and we have the strongest connection through our church and our religion and Jerusalem open for everyone and the text, the meaning, the texture and all in the symphony extremely special and you don't have to be a magician to listen and just to feel this atmosphere but again for Pendereski the idea of creating something special the music that can show the importance of Jerusalem the story the religion the problems and how we should survive with this also peace as you mentioned and harmony. So there is a narration also in the symphony with the important message. The text is going on a Hebrew, also very special texture and meaning. And we have biggest choir divided with the three sections. We have a extra orchestra in the hall to make the impression of big messages. I can't speak about the idea of the composer because I think that that's not fair to describe the music in words. But really, that's a very special piece, not only because of the meaning and because of the name, just what you can hear in that special, the music and how it sounds together with the orchestra, with soloists, with the narration. And all of this, that's really something that's special. But uh, when we discuss the symphony with the maestro, and let's also mention two special instruments, tuba phones that was created by maestro. The sound of a percussion coming from very deep bass drum. Tembrato, but very fast and very difficult for the orchestra. And also was the meaning just to create something special. And the structure in general of the symphony is extremely unusual and difficult for the orchestra. I remember that was the dress rehearsal. Maestro mentioned very special things that for me, the most important for the symphony is the waves, waves of emotion, because text is so difficult, but the main point is to give this feeling of waves, emotion of the waves because all different lines are connected with each other and after the concert I was really the proud to hear that we did it and yes that's very special music from Maestro. Now you must have felt a great responsibility to conduct and perform the 2018 Yerevan concert in honor of and with the great maestro present in the audience. Even more, because in the same year I was in Poland, I was conducting his second symphony two times in Warsaw and Katowice with different orchestras and it was also a huge responsibility. But you are more than right. So there was a huge responsibility. The conductor's touches in such music, it's unnormally important because how you will lead the lines of the choir. You will 
have the texture of the music. And that's very important to understand when Maestro is there in the audience and he knows his music by heart. And this symphony is not an unknown piece, very famous. And he knows how to motivate the musician to get the right sound. But of course, there was a great artist, the great singers from Poland. And it was Armenian big choirs. We invited different the singers from different choirs. And yes, there was a normal the responsibility. And I think that was one of the most important concerts in my life because not only about that maestro is in the public and then after the concert I should look at his eyes. No, also the feeling that you have a big orchestra. Percussion, the group. Three choirs. But again, you have to follow the music. That was my main task. To remember that music is on the first step. And I'm very happy that at some point with orchestra, we did it. I hope so. I just wanted to touch on that a bit more. Written in seven parts, you've got five vocalists, a narrator, choirs, and the orchestra. How did you manage this massive undertaking? Uh, <laughs> so that's a very good question. I should answer with some kind of humor because when I confirmed the piece, I was quite sure that we can do that because we love his music. We performed most of his symphonic pieces and you know, you have to know how it works, the chemistry. When we start our the rehearsals, the main problem was that our philharmonic, the whole Aram Khachidurian, the concert hall, when there was orchestra also, I don't like this word, but like a winds band, as usually the mentioned band was in the balcony, yeah, in the hall. So there was huge echo. And during the rehearsals, there was big problem how to lead the music, but the echo was abnormally late and very loud so yeah there's five soloists percussions three choirs different we have two tuba phones on the left and the right the very the corners of the stage and yes the band there was a normal number of technical issues i'm not mean just a stage all this we have in our agenda all these issues big stuff a normally big orchestra and so on and so on but we managed to keep the music on our first line really happy that after the concert with the orchestra with singers we felt that the music was key point I don't know how we managed, but we did it. And that's why I think that that concert, that special evening was one of the topest points in our orchestra's life and career. Maestro was very pleased with the concert and the event overall, saying it was one of the best festivals of music he had experienced in the last 20 to 30 years. And he said it was a great pleasure to come to Armenia, that there's a great atmosphere there. And you said we should all be able to preserve and develop the link between Penderecki and Armenian musicians. That's absolutely great to hear. Moreover, that was the greatest festival. There was a fantastic atmosphere around Penderecki. The because for the rehearsals, we just decided to walk from the hotel to the venue and young boys and girls, like 15 years old, when they recognized the maestro on the streets, they asked him to take a photos and do some selfies. And if you are in this atmosphere, then 15 years old boys and girls try to take a selfie with Penderecki. I think that's fantastic, right? <laughs> So in Armenia, he is the most important and valuable the person, biggest the friend of Armenia. That was also fantastic. So our all concerts was a full hall. Again, young audience was on the concert. It also means a lot because 
I admire all the classic the music the audience. But of course, especially for contemporary music, his music is not easy. His music is very difficult. You have to be in to understand and to sit like a 40 minutes, one hour, two hours to understand the, what's going on and what is the music all about. And I was happiest person because every time when there was a chamber concert, there was a symphonic concert, all full hall, the musicians, audience, the proud that Penderecki is there the, with them. And the topest point, I mean, the gala concert was seven gates of Jerusalem. There was also something special. For Armenia, classic music, it's more than important. From 10, 6 to 7, the families, they are following the music. I mean, kids going to the musical school. For Armenian kids, just like a second alphabet. For us, great the musicians, they are something unnormally special. And he is the legend for Armenia. And yes, the festival was fantastic. But that was the last biggest the festival when we enjoyed his presence. But I'm normally proud that we organized that festival and, of of course, we will keep that feelings all fantastic emotional the feelings that with us for a very long time. He was open to everything around him. Did he develop the tuba phone because he heard a sound and he felt like he wasn't able to really achieve that sound with a conventional instrument or voice? Exactly, yes. It's easy to deliver the final product when it's there, but he is a genius also because he is a translator in a contemporary language, even in the music. So he was the first and he created his own language, his own expression of fantastically contemporary and dramatic and very meaningful music, also with a tuba phone. So for this symphony, he created special instrument, and yes, you can play very fast and small notes here with the feeling of vibrato. So the percussion instrument sound very deep and low, but with the sense of the real sound of vibrato, vibrato, yeah, vibrations. Sounds fantastically wild and big sound with very soft texture, but very deep and very fast. So in this fast moment when we have a choir, three choirs with divided lines, we have percussions and these two tuba phones with the lower the voices, that was something special. So he created his own sound. And yes, for only one symphony to see the score is just the miracle. I'm more than sure that it was not just a task just to create something new. No, if you can imagine the symphony without these tuba phones, is something missing. And Maestro created his own sound to make it three times richer. great love for Maestro. He had a great love for you. <laughs> Can you tell us what you learned over the years from Maestro Penderecki and what your remembrances are of last March 29th when he passed away? Uh, March 29th was a very difficult period for the fall of us, but uh, yes, I remember that feelings and I remember we are speaking about the genius he is the creator of new language in music in classic the music so he is inventor he is genius he is more than physical body fantastic energy and of course it's very hard to think that he is not with us anymore but if you believe him as a person and if you believe in his new music and talent, you can always touch it and you can all always go deeper and deeper. And again, I love him with all my heart. And I remember my first feelings when I met, he was so shy. He was very normal, the person, because for me, the Pendereski was legend. And our first the meeting, we discussed the music. I asked him about my score. After this rehearsal, I realized that now I was discussing his music, the music with the legend. It was very easy. And with this kind of 
attitude. He invested in my musical career a lot. I believe what I'm doing and I believe in his music. For me, music is like a religion in general. What you believe or you don't believe. I believe in this. And I'm very proud and I'm a very happy person because in my life, in my musical life, Penderecki is on the most important level for me. So he is a special person for me, close to my heart, composer, and again, I believe. Maestro Sergei Sembatian, thank you so much for coming on the podcast to discuss the great Christoph Penderecki. Thank you very much. It was the great honor to speak about the legend and greatest composer. Thank you. This is Max Horowitz, producer and host of Penderecki In Memoriam podcast, created by Anna Pejanowska and presented by Polish Cultural Institute New York. Thank you to project partners Dukes, Naxos, Ludwig von Beethoven Association, and Shah EAM for sharing Christoph Penderecki's music with the world. We appreciate you joining us in honoring and celebrating Penderecki's life and legacy. Make sure to subscribe. <laughs>